Alrighty, hello. This is deck tech number three. Uh, this one's mono green. This is also made for a friend. Uh, so this one is built around Ave Progenitor Ooze, which is an ooze. So this is going to be an ooze tribal deck. Uh, Ave does have the ability to storm when you cast it, which is pretty unique among commanders. But it's not the easiest thing to do in mono green. We do have a lot of cheap tricks in here to make that a little easier. And obviously the copies that enter are not legendary. But that'll make Ave quite big, especially if you have just other oozes in general. Because Ave enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it for each other ooze. So let's go ahead and get into the mana base. And as always, these stats come directly from Mox Field. So the total mana value of this deck is 201. The average mana value of cards is 2.03, including lands, or 3.14, not including lands. There are a total of 35 land cards in this deck, and 34 of those lands produce green mana. The average number of lands in your starting hand is going to be 2.47, and there are 29 of those lands are forests. The non-basic lands include Desert of the Indomitable, Slippery Karst, and Tranquil Thicket. The ability to cycle these lands later if you don't need them is actually really great, especially in the late game. That, uh, that cycling is an activated ability, so it will not count for your storm count, but it will get more cards in hand, and it's not that expensive to do. Next we have Jungle Basin and Temple of the False Gods, both of which will tap for two mana instead of just one. So it's just a little boost in your mana value, which you will need. And uh, especially later on, because uh, so there, as always, there's two versions of this deck, one with combos and one without. Uh, the combos will be included at the end, as well as what cards to remove to get to those combos. And you do need mana to get those combos to pop off. And the last land, which is probably one of the best ones, is Oron Reef the Vastwood. If we pull this out when we cast our commander with a decent storm count and we tap it to put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature, then we will have a lot of 1-1 one, one counters flying out there. But in general, it's just a really good land. Ramp. We have Cultivate, Explore, and Grow from the Ashes for our sorceries. Uh, grow from the Ashes can be kicked or you can cast it as normal. All of these are pretty good. Uh... And Explorer lets you draw an extra card. Then we have Migration Path, which can be cycled. And Sprouting Vines, which has Storm, which is kind of what we're looking for. And the fact that it's an instant makes this a little easier to hit. If we wait until somebody else, say somebody's playing a cheaper deck and they pop off a couple quick spells, then we're immediately searching for three or four basic lands right off the bat. And then we have Scale the Heights, which is very similar to the other card that I've already forgotten what it was called, but this time you put a 1-1 counter, gain 2 life, and then you can play an additional land and draw a card. After that we've got two mana dorks. We've got Drum Hunter. At the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with a power 5 or greater, you can draw a card. And Lanoir Visionary, both of which tap for 1 mana. One is colorless, one is a green, but both let you draw a card at least once. Card draw, I might have included those guys in here twice, but first off, we've got Keeper of Fables. Uh, that's a cat, not a news. But whenever one or more non-human creatures you control deal combat to a player, you get to draw a card. And we have a lot of non-human creatures. In fact, I think there's only one creature that counts as human, and that would be Evolution 1. We then have Harmonize, which gets us three cards. Hunter's Prowess, which gives our creature Trample, plus three, plus three, and you get to draw as many cards as damage it does to a player, which is really good, because that's what you want to do anyways, is damage the other players. We've got Life's Legacy. Uh, sacrifice a creature and draw cards equal to its power. Momentous Fall does the same thing. It's a little bit more pricey to cast, mana-wise. And then Inspiring Call, which not only puts 1-1 one -one counters on them, and makes them indestructible, but you get to draw a card for each creature. Or no. Okay, I read that wrong. Draw a card for each creature you control with a 1-1 counter on it, which should be most of them. Those creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. So you get to draw cards, and it makes them indestructible for when you swing out. We've got Return of the Wild Speaker, which can be used to draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-humans. 
Or we can give all our non-human creatures plus three, plus three until end of turn. Really good for a end of the game swing out. Uh, Life Crafter's Bestiary, which lets us scry one at the beginning, and we, whenever we cast a creature, we can pay a green and draw a card. And Abundance isn't necessarily card draw on its own, but it is card selection. You get to choose between land or non-land. And instead of drawing a card, you reveal cards from the top until you reveal a land or non-land card, your choice. And then you put the card that you revealed into your hand. We then have Colossal Majesty at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw a card. Fecundity, whenever a creature dies, that creature's controller may draw a card. This will help other people out a little bit, so if you want to replace it, that's not a terrible idea, but it's not that bad. Uh, Garuk's Uprising, when it enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw a card. Creatures you control have Trample, which is extremely good in this deck, because you're going to be having some very large green creatures. And whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. And last but not least is Multani's Presence. Whenever a spell you play is countered, draw a card. It's not likely that you'll get a whole lot of cards out of this, but it's extremely cheap. It only costs 1 green mana, which makes it really good as just an extra spell to cast before you throw out Ave. Ave only costs 5 mana, so if you have several different uh, really cheap cards, you can throw them out and then cast Ave to get uh, a really good storm off. Cheap tricks, so these are some of those cheap tricks I mentioned. We've got Guy's Blessing. Target player shovels up to 3 target cards from their graveyard into their library, then you draw a card. And when it's put into your graveyard from your library, you shuffle your whole graveyard into your library. So it'll help you whether you cast it or not. The next creature spell you play this turn can't be countered by spells or abilities, and you draw a card from Insist. That's extremely good, because most people, if they want to counter, would probably wait until you're about to cast your commander. Although, with the way Storm works, technically the Storm ability triggers off of cast, so you would create your copies regardless. But it's just another extra thing to boost the Storm count even further. Uh, Irresistible Prey, target creature must be blocked this turn if able, and you draw a card. Charge through, target creature gains trample until end of turn, draw a card. Dissenter's Deliverance, we can destroy an artifact, or we could cycle it. Haze of Pollen, that'll protect you, preventing all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Lace with Moonglove, target creature gets death touch until end of turn, and you draw a card. Lamestide Weave, I don't see being extremely useful, but it is extremely cheap to cast. Name a card, then target player puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. If that card is the named card, you gain life equal to its converted mana cost. The, most you'll, the best use you'll get out of this is if somebody uses a tutor that puts the card on top of their library instead of their hand. And then you'll already know what is on top of their library. And then we have Lull, another prevent all combat damage. Very good to have. Might of the Old Ways. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. And it also has Coven. If you control 3 or more creatures with different powers, draw a card. Uh, repopulate. Shuffle all creature cards from target player's graveyard into that player's library. We have Weather the Storm, which also has the Storm ability. And it gains you 3 life. So it's not bad to cast this just before you cast Ave if you've got a decent Storm built up and enough mana to do so. And it's also an instance of somebody else is popping off. You can gain a whole lot of life really quickly. We have Implement of Ferocity. It only costs one. The main feature of this cheap trick is to cast it for the one mana before you cast it. Before you cast Ave. But you could also just cast it and use it immediately because it only costs one mana to use. Uh, we've got Bonds of Mortality, which is actually extremely useful. I was uh, in the test play. I played it, and I played this deck, and then I let one of the bots play this deck. And that bot continuously destroyed my indestructible and hexproof creatures by using that second ability. Ground Seal is also good if you're playing against graveyard-themed decks. Uh, that will not, however, stop things like Muldrotha, which allow you to cast cards from decks. From your graveyard, that is because that is not targeting the card. You are simply casting it as if it's a second hand. Uh, I did test this, and it did allow my Muldrotha deck to play cards and play spells from the graveyard. This more is pointing towards 
tar returning target card from your graveyard to your hand. And that was a glitch. Oozing with power. Acidic Slime. As always, he's a very good classic creature. Costs 5, enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. Bio Waste Blob will get out of hand very quickly. Oozes you control, get plus 1, plus 1, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a commander, create a token. That's a copy of Bio Waste Blob. Bloodline Pretender, it's a changeling. When it enters, we choose a creature type, which is obviously going to be Ooze. And whenever another creature of the chosen type enters a battlefield on your control, we put a 1-1 one -one counter on him. Chameleon Colossus, protection from black, and it gets plus X, it's got uh, pay 2. Uh, and 2 green, Chameleon Colossus gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is its power. Very good, it's a changeling, so it is also an ooze. We've got... Consuming Blob, another good card. Its power and toughness is equal, or its power is equal to the number of card types among cards in your graveyard, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. At the beginning of your end step, create a green ooze creature token with the same thing. So you're basically creating copies of Consuming Blob, except those copies will not create their own copies. Corrosive Ooze is very good, especially against equipment decks. Uh, whenever it becomes blocked or Whenever it blocks or becomes blocked by an equipped creature, destroy all equipment attached to that creature at the end of combat. Experiment 1. He is the only human in the deck, but he is a human ooze. He has evolved, so whenever a creature enters the battlefield in your control, if it has greater power or toughness than this creature, put a 1-1 counter on him. And you can remove two 1-1 counters from him to regenerate him. Then we have Gluttonous Slime, which has Flash and Devour 1, so... Devour says whenever it enters the battlefield, you could sacrifice any number of creatures and put that for one. It would be put one, one, one count, a single one, one counter on this creature for each creature that was sacrificed. So if you sacrifice 10 creatures, you get 10 one ones. We've got Gobbling Ooze. Pay a green and sacrifice another creature. Put a one, one counter on Gobbling Ooze. Inexorable Blob, which has Delirium. Uh, whenever it attacks, if there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard, put a 3-3 green ooze creature token onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, which isn't very hard to get to, especially if we're slinging out sorceries and instants. Uh, Manaplasm, whenever you cast a spell, Manaplasm gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. We've got Mitotic Slime, which breaks into a bunch of different tokens. Ochre Jelly, which... You could cast it for one green if you want to use it for boosting your storm count without spending a lot of mana, or you can actually pay the X cost. So Ochre Jelly will enter with X 1-1 one, one counters on it. When it dies, if it had two or more 1-1 one, one counters on it, you create a token that's a copy, except it has half as many 1-1 one, one counters ran it down. Or on Reef Ooze, when it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control, and whenever it attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each attacking creature with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So that will boost our attacking forces tremendously. Predator Ooze is indestructible, and whenever it attacks, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, and whenever a creature dealt damage by it this turn dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. A very, very annoying opponent to face. We've got Scavenging Ooze, which allows us to exile cards from our opponent's graveyards, which is really convenient, especially if they are playing graveyard-themed decks. We have Slurk All Ingesting. It enters with 5 one, one counters, and whenever it or another creature you control dies, if it had 1-1 one, one counter on it, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control that has a 1-1 one, one counter on it already. Splitting Slime. It's got Monstrosity 3, so you pay that cost, and it put 3 one, one counters on it. And when it becomes monstrous, you create a token that's a copy of him, except the token is not monstrous. So given enough mana, you could continue to make an infinite number of slimes that are monstrous. Uh, we have Gelatinous Genesis, create X, 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 green ooze creature tokens. You could just pay the one green for the storm. Miming Slime, create an X, X, green ooze creature token where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Very helpful. Slime Molding, once again, you can pay just the green, or you can pay X to create an XX Green Ooze Creature Token, or just to boost your storm count. Utility, we have Brawn, which is more useful in your graveyard, and Birthing Bows. Brawn, if it's in your graveyard and you control a forest, gives all your creatures trample, 
And Birthing Bows has pay for, tap, create a 2-2 colorless shapeshifter creature token with changeling, meaning those changelings are also oozes. And our last utility card is Decree of Savagery. This is in here. If you need it, you can put 4 one counters on each creature you control. Massive boost to your army. It's a good move just before swinging out. It's very expensive to cast, however. Or you can cycle it to put 4 one counters on a single creature. And now for the combo. So the cards we want to take out would be Decree of Savagery, Multani's Presence, and Chatterstorm. And we would replace those with Bramble Elemental, Utopia Micon, and Whip Silk, respectively. So, Bramble Elemental says whenever an aura becomes attached to it, create two 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens. And Utopia Micon has a lot of text, but the main thing we're concerned with is sacrifice a sapperling, add one mana of any color, and Whip Silk costs one green, and you can pay a green to return it to its owner's hand. So for this combo to work, this is an infinite storm combo, so that's all it will do. So you will want one of your storm spells in hand, meaning you want at least 12 mana right off the bat. So you use 5 to cast Bramble Elemental, 1 to cast Utopia My Micon, so that's 6. Then you cast Whip Silk targeting Bramble Elemental, which will give you your 7th mana. And from there, you'll create the Sapperling tokens, which will allow you to cast Whip Silk and return it to your hand in an infinite number of times. And the last five mana is should be used to cast either your Commander or one of your other many Storm spells. And that would give you an infinite number of, if you cast your Commander, an infinite number of infinite-sized oozes. Or, I guess, scaling up oozes, because each one would have more power than the last by one. But, with an infinite number of big oozes, you will definitely be able to win the game. They won't have haste. Uh, there are other upgrades you could throw in to add haste, but this is the budget version of the deck, which costs approximately, so without combos, is $21.31, and with combos is $21.91. So that's the entirety of this deck. If you guys liked it, let me know. Uh, if you have any requests for different commanders or a different theme of deck, so far I've done a lot of tokeny decks, uh, then let me know. Uh, I will make other decks. If you guys comment a commander you want to see or a style of deck you want to see done in budget, just let me know down below and I will get to that. Uh, you guys have a wonderful day and yeah. The links to this will be down in the description for both the combo and non-combo versions, as well as a link to my Moxfield profile where I post all of the decks that go here, as well as decks that are currently in progress. So have a good day and goodbye.